Czech Republic is famous for both great beer and great firearms. And this week on The Gun Room, we get to sample both as we go behind the scenes with FK Bruno, where we'll check out one of the world's most expensive and most powerful production pistols. Stick around. Now, the FK Bruno Field Pistol has been on the market for about six months now, and it's a big, honking 7.5 millimeter caliber handgun. And to be honest with you, the US market hasn't quite figured out what to do with it. And I think that's probably because we're looking at it through the prism of our own experiences. To give you an example, I carry a single stack 9mm as a concealed carry piece because the most likely threat I'm going to face is probably some crackhead trying to jack me at an ATM with a pot metal 25. If we go to some other regions of the world that are outside of my experience, then there are other threats that need to be countered. For example, instead of somebody trying to jack me from my wallet, there's probably going to be teams of three or four dudes with AKs and vests trying to take not my wallet, but my life. So what can we do in order to counter that and still have a concealed carry pistol? This is one solution. It's really meant to bridge that gap between concealed carry handgun and full on carrying a carbine over your shoulder. But does it work? Well, we're gonna go behind the scenes and see if it actually does. We're gonna shoot it against some gel targets, some tissue simulant, and some intermediate barriers, including body armor. Just for shits and grins, we also have a high-speed camera to see everything in glorious slow-mo. And then we're going to take it on a hunt and see how it performs against live targets. Let's go. One thing I've noticed as I'm walking through the FK Bruno factory is that it's a curious mixture of brand spanking new CNC machines and kind of an old world atmosphere in that everything is hogged out of bar stock. You don't see any castings in here. You don't see any MIM parts. These are all 100% big chunks of steel. And then everything is hogged away that doesn't look like a gun. So it's very, very old school when it comes to that. But if you look around you, check all this stuff out. I've got a little bit of machining background and I can tell you just looking at these machines run, then their speeds and feeds are like way, way slower than you'd see in a typical American factory where everything's optimized for production. These guys take their time and produce really, really high quality finishing. Well, we've seen the facility. Let's go check out the test range. It's 100 meters precast concrete structure and it's got some high speed cameras in. And I'm sure we're gonna get some really cool footage of some gel being blown apart. Okay, here we go. This is a 95 grain hollow point. This is available in the US right now. Next up is going to be a new loading for the US market, and this is a 125 grain Sierra jacketed hollow point. This is not a handgun bullet. This was originally designed to be fired through a 30-30 rifle. So at around about 2,000 feet per second impact, you're probably going to see some significant expansion in frag. But at the low velocity for this, uh, out of the six inch barreled handgun, then you're going to see significantly more penetration than you would otherwise see. But we're going to check this out. We're going to see how it performed against bone. Maybe you use this in the whitetail woods. Handgun hunting with one of these things? Yeah, I think this will do the trick. They went. Oh. That was a 125 grain bullet moving at 1750 feet per second out of a six inch barrel. All right, so we now have two rounds in that gel block, a 95 grain FK solid copper hollow point and a 125 grain Sierra jacketed hollow point. And we're gonna take a look down there and see what damage we've inflicted. It's a long way down. It's way longer than I'm normally used to go and checking gel blocks on. All righty, so four layers of denim, one layer of skin simulant, which is a one millimeter rubber sheet. Let's take a look at the gel block. Okay, so we've got some expansion right about the one inch mark and a little bit of fragmentation. You can see some lead frag in there and that bullet continues on. It's just shedding lead particles as it goes through. And if we look at the paper behind, it looks like it's been traveling sideways 
just as it exits. 110 yards and full penetration of a 20 inch gel block plus denim plus skin simulant. Great performance. Now we're gonna make things a little bit more difficult. We're now adding two layers of bone to simulate pretty much getting hit in the chest. So it's still at 110 yards. So um, it's gonna be interesting to see if this bullet will actually hold up. Boom. Fly, little bullet, fly. All right, on the high speed, what we've seen is that bullet penetrates four layers of denim, one layer of skin, two layers of bone, and then go all the way through, tumbling as it went, a 20 inch gel block. And you see it fly out the back and continue down range. Didn't seem to slow it down one bit, adding a bunch of bone in there. All right, bonus gelatin, four layers of denim, skin, two layers of bone simulant. 95 grain FK performed as advertised straight through the bone and then at the 125 grain Sierra, I would just skim the side of it. It performed exactly as it did the first test. This time around though, we're gonna flip this block and then I'm gonna shoot it from close in with an FK field pistol. And assuming that I can actually hit the thing, We'll see what it does closer in. Alrighty, 125 Grand Sierra Hollow Point. Through an actual field pistol. Okay, firing now. Okay, weapon clear. Oh yeah. Okay, there's the impact from the 125 Sierra. And you can see it started expanding, shedding some of its lead nose right around the uh, three quarters of an inch mark. And that's blown straight through the bone simulant, shedding more frag, shedding, 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 and then the rest of the bullet has exited the block and kept on going. There's a lot of damage in there. One of our last shots, we're gonna shoot a very complicated gel target. It has a level three vest, it has some clothing and some skin and then some bone and some gel and then the vest out the back. So really it's, it's as complicated as it gets. We're gonna try this with a spoon tip bullet and see how it performs at 100 yards out of a six inch barrel. Go. Well, as everybody knows, the key to de defeating soft armor is velocity. And this seems to have hit pretty much where we wanted it to go. So that's gone through the vest completely. It's gone into the torso. It has gone through the rib cage, simulated rib cage. And we've got penetration. Yep, it's at the back. And it is sticking, the bullet is sticking in the vest all the way through. And there is a spoon tip bullet. It's no longer a spoon tip because it's gone through pretty much everything we wanted it to go through. It was stopped only by the vest on the far side. Remember, this is at 100 yards. Well, we've seen behind the scenes about how this weapon system is made, both the handgun and the cartridge that goes in it. And we've also done some ballistic testing on the range against muscle and tissue simulants, as well as intermediate barriers. Of course, that doesn't tell the whole story. We're not shooting simulated targets out on the range. We're shooting actual, well, in this case, live living tissue. bunch of fallow deer out there and we're going to try out this handgun and the 125 Green Sierra jacketed hollow point on a fairly large fallow deer so he's probably around about 200 pounds I'm not going to be pretending this is a hunt and it's not even a hunt in the way that sitting in a box pine in Texas over a feeder is a hunt but this is purely testing how well this bullet performs in an animal which is Roughly the same size as a human. So we've got him coming in, looks like uh, there's a bunch of deer coming in. And he's right about 80 yards. And I'm just going to make sure that we don't get a shoot through. The passer only hit the animal that we want to hit. 
It's going to be kind of difficult because they're all milling around. I'm going to try and put it just behind the shoulder. Break him down. There we go. High shoulder hit. One round. Straight down. One shot kill. Okay, that's about 80 yards. Let's go check him out. Alrighty, hit him pretty much on the point of the shoulder. Kind of like that high shoulder hit because it breaks him down immediately and normally sends a bunch of frag and secondary projectiles through the heart and lungs. And it's usually lights out in one shot. So we're going to take him now over the barn, field dress him and take a look at what damage the bullet did. Okay, so we have this big black fallow deer up in the barn now. He weighs in at just over 100 kilos, so 225 pounds or thereabouts. Uh, one shot drop and just at the point of the shoulder. And here as you can see the entrance wound. I don't see an exit wound there, um, but we're going to open him up and we're going to see what damage that 125 grain uh, Sierra caused. The whole bunch of busted up bone. All right, guys, as you can see, that damage is pretty significant. I mean, there's a chunk of damage that way through the shoulder and then went we don't know where. Now, remember, this is 80 meters from a handgun at a 200 pound, 220 pound animal. So, um, it's, it, as far as performance goes, I don't see doing much better from something that you can wear on your hip. You know, 44 mag, yeah, you could probably get a little bit more damage out of it. Ultimately, this is super flat. And as you can see, it's pretty destructive too. At the FK Bruno factory, we got a chance to see behind the scenes, got us to do some ballistic testing. Also, we got a little bit of a sneak peek. There is more product dropping around about the first of the year. You guys are definitely going to want to see that. That's it for a recoil. We'll see you next time on Gunroom.